Hello everybody, uh, today we will discuss the remaining part of the uh, solidification associated with the casting process. So, uh, last class we have discussed two different types of the uh, casting process uh, in terms of the heat transfer or maybe where the contact resistance we can consider based on that uh, we derive that solidification time depends on the volume by area ratio one case it is proportional to the V by S uh, square of that and other cases the solidification time uh, depends on the V by A, A ratio. So, that the second case the V by A ratio we will try to uh, discuss in this particular module. But first we need to understand uh, that uh, in a particular casting process a permanent mold casting on the die casting process which part the maximum resistance will offer during the heat transfer. So, in this case we can say that in general the solidification with predominant interface resistance that means the interface resistance becomes the uh, dominating factor here and based on that we will try to estimate what is the solidification time this particular die casting and the permanent mold casting process. So, definitely heat flow is mainly controlled by the thermal resistance at the interface the mold metal interface. So, suppose this is the mold and uh, this is the uh, metal part liquid metal. So, at the interface so maximum mole metal interface so maximum interface is uh, resistance is offered uh, by this this part only. So, this usually happens in case of the die casting process or permanent mole casting where we can use the mole metal in the uh, mole material is basically the metallic component. Uh, in that case we can find out, find out this type of the this uh, heat transfer phenomena uh, in case of the casting process. But uh, in this case, but uh, we, we considering the maximum resistance offered and remaining part we can assume that there is no resistance of the heat flow. So, but this actually why you are considering uh, at this contact point there is a heat flow uh, is uh, uh, only this contact resistance because if the uh, we can say the very perfect condition that when the liquid metal is perfectly weighting the interface surface we can say that so intimate contact between the mole metal interface. So, in that case we can assume the, the we, uh, there is no contact resistance between these two uh, uh, the interface basically when the perfect weighting means it is not creating any kind of the interface and the smooth transition of the heat transfer occurs. So, in that case mathematically we can assume that there is no uh, contact resistance at this interface. So, anyway, but this uh, practically it is may not happen because these two metals are different the mold metal and the this uh, cast metal these are the two different. So, definitely perfect weighting action may not happen. So, in that case so that uh, heat transfer is basically this the um, obstacle by the thermal resistance um, between the mold and metal interface. So, with this analogy we will try to discuss that how the rate of the solidification can be calculated in this particular case. We consider uh, this is uh, this component this along this direction the distance uh, towards the center of the mold metal uh, sorry cast, mold, cast volume towards the center and this is the mold metal and uh, within the mold metal there is a and the, uh, this is the interface and of course, at a particular time the mole metal interface is moves at the solidified component is the distance equal to delta T at a time T and here this interface this temperature equal to theta 0. So, whatever drop in the temperature at the, at the mold surface dropping of the temperature from directly theta F the melting point temperature to theta 0 and we can say it is a theta 0 temperature is throughout the mold wall this theta 0 temperature is basically assume it, it means that rate of the heat transfer is basically infinite such that there is no temperature gradient between this uh, this two point at the at the along the mold uh, the thickness of the mold metal. So, therefore, temperature here theta 0 as well as the theta 0 at this point and sudden drop from theta f to theta 0 at the mold metal interface. So, it means that we are basically representing the whatever contact resistance exists th uh, that at the interface. However, thermal resistance at the interface is basically overriding of course, this is we can assuming uh, this case that uh, this is there is no temperature drop temperature gradient at the across the mold uh, uh, thickness direction. So, that is why the it is basically thermal resistance considering in this case it is a uh, we can interface is overriding 
and temperature distribution assuming the no superheat we can assuming the liquid metal temperature is basically at the exactly melting point temperature and the superheating temperature we are neglecting in this case it means that superheating temperature is equal to the melting point temperature at this at this particular in this particular case. Now we can calculate that uh, this is the liquid molten metal and at a particular time it is already solidify and create the uh, total solidified distance the delta T then and uh, uh, which is with reference to the mold and solidified metal interface. Now rate of the heat flow through the interface we can calculate that Q dot equal to that H F theta F minus theta this is basically H F where the heat transfer coefficient we are considering and we know that at the interface uh, um, in, in this case the we may film heat transfer coefficient. So, it is basically we treat this as a convective mode of the heat transfer because we can introduce the heat transfer coefficient here and area of the cross sectional area H F and temperature difference theta F minus theta 0. So, that indicates the simple calculation at the interface the rate of the heat transfer uh, assuming since we are considering there is a contact resistance only. So, contact resistance at the interface is represented in the mode of the heat transfer assuming the convective mode of the heat transfer here. So, H F field heat transfer coefficient. Now, suppose at a particular time t the solidification uh, front moves at the distance delta from the mold phase. So, that we have already mentioned in the figure also at a particular time it is a movement of the solidification front uh, uh, at the mold phase. Now, the in this case what is the upon solidification? So, what is the total amount of the heat released uh, during this case? We can estimate this other way also. So, rho m the uh, is the density of the uh, liquid metal that means cast metal cross sectional area is the same in this case also A is the cross sectional area and uh, L is the latent heat in this case the change of phase and there is changing of this thing the d delta by this it basically indicates the velocity of the solidification front. So, d delta d delta by d t in terms of t we can reach this is the, the rate of the heat released in this case. So, here we are considering only there is a the heat release mean latent heat we are considering with that means the heat considering only the change of the phase here because uh, we are neglecting the superheated uh, uh, superheating and in this particular case. So, we are assuming the liquid metal is at exactly at the melting point temperature just is changing the phase from liquid phase to solid phase and it considers the latent heat only. So, once we calculate this thing this actually indicates the total solidification what is the amount of the heat released uh, for the to create the delta at the particular time the solidification front moves delta T and uh, um, so it is basically uh, indicates that rho m a the cross section area and this is basically the velocity. So, we can see the cross section area and the velocity is a volume flow rate kind of uh, these things and multiply by latent heat that actually indicates total amount of the heat release over the time t. Now, in these two cases one is the one point of view the interface resistance we considering based on that what is the heat flow at the interface and other cases we are considering the this uh, what is the amount of the heat release to make a solidification front moves at a distance t uh, over the uh, uh, over the distance delta t. So, therefore, uh, we make it equal these two cases and or maybe I can say that the steady state situation this must be balanced. So, here H f theta f minus theta 0 this is the total amount of the heat flow through the interface other way and other cases that there is a uh, rate of the uh, the rate of the heat release uh, through the movement of the solidification front. So, we make it equal in this cases and we can reach this equation d delta by d t equal to H f theta f minus theta 0 by rho m into L this expression we can reach. Now, similar we can calculation do the calculation what is the over the time t. Uh, what is the uh, uh, this uh, the, uh, the solidification from move from 0 to uh, delta delta as a function of 0 to delta so which is also a function of t so 0 to delta d delta integration of this thing equal to h of this integration of 0 to t because this all are independent of the time t now we can find out that delta t perform the integration delta t equal to h of theta f minus theta 0 by rho m l into t so this is the variation of the uh, the 
the solidification front at a particular time t this is the calculation it depends on the film heat transfer coefficient hf the difference between the theta minus theta 0 theta 0 is the initial temperature and rho m l. So, density and the latent heat density of the cast metal and the latent heat it depends on the uh, value of the, uh, the, the thickness of the solidification front at time t. Now, in this case this is the one calculation, but we can do further calculation also. Now, suppose the depth of the solidification increases linearly that we, we can see here the delta t is basically is a is a is proportional to t actually. So, I can say that with respect to time. So, delta t is gradually increases linearly that is very obvious from this expression also. Now, uh, other prospect we can find out that what is the what we disc, uh, calculate the total amount of the heat release q r is basically uh, rho m v other point of view we are calculating what is the total amount of the heat release. Uh, in this case we can see that rho m into v is the volume cast volume latent heat C m theta p minus theta f see the peak temperature that means superheated temperature and theta f the freezing temperature in this case and the C m is the specific heat for the uh, cast volume. Now, if theta p equal to theta basically we are neglecting the, the superheated part here. So, therefore, q r can be calculated rho m v into L. So, rho m velocity into L that is the total amount of the heat release. Now, or maybe I can see the heat rejected by the casting total amount of the heat rejected by the casting that is very obvious the rho m v into L the this one calculation. Now, we can see that heat flow through the interface during the period of the solidification uh, time T s. So, over the solidification time what is the total amount of the heat release this actually heat rejected by the casting the um, over the solidification time T s the total calculation and we see that it depends on the what is the, uh, the volume of the volume of the casting. So, if you know the total volume of the casting and it is only changing the phase liquid phase to solid phase. So, in that case this is the the rho m v into L actually indicates the total amount of the heat release over the period of the solidification time. Now, heat flow through the interface. So, same amount of the heat has to be extracted from the interface. So, we can calculate other way what is the total amount of the heat flow through the interface during the period of the solidification. We can see that period T s that q r also calculated 0 by T s q dot rate of the heat flow. So, rate of the heat flow we can we have already seen the rate of the heat flow is q dot is that h f theta f minus theta 0 into a that we, we have already calculated. So, here you can see the q dot the rate of the heat flow through the interface q dot h f theta f minus theta 0 into a. So, same thing rate of the heat flow that is over the time T s we can say that h f theta f minus theta 0 into area into T s. T s is the assume the total solidification time. Now, this is the uh, q r other way we can calculate that is the calculate what is the amount of the heat release total heat release during the solidification period through the interface and other way what is the total amount of the heat rejected by the cast volume that also we have calculated. Now, if we make this balance energy balance this both are same here we can see the T s equal to is basically rho m l h f theta f minus theta 0 and v by a. Now, we can see that here solidification time is actually proportional to the volume by area ratio which is different from the, the sand casting. So, sand mold casting uh, if you observe the sand mold casting it was solidification time is proportional to the V by A square, but in this case this, uh, this through die casting or permanent mold casting the solidification time actually depends on the volume by area ratio. Now, you can clearly distinguish that the depending upon the which part of the creates more amount of the thermal resistance the of the heat flow based on that we can calculate that the solidification time can vary depending upon the nature of the casting process. So, again I am summarized in this way that the if it is a sand casting process. So, T s proportional to the volume by area square, but it is a permanent mold casting or die casting process T s proportional to the only the volume by area ratio. So, therefore, but this equation is valid. Uh, volume by area ratio the solidification time was very small very thin section part and heavy metal mold. So, in, in, in case of the heavy metal mold so such that heat is dissipated very quickly through the metallic surfaces and I am talking about the mold surfaces through the mold uh, wall it is distributed very quickly. So, that is why in a heavy uh, mold metal so this kind of the thermal conditions actually prevails and based on that we can see 
it is a die casting or permanent mold casting the solidification name is actually depends on the volume by area ratio. Now, we can look into the other types of the casting processes in the other cases also and uh, we start to understand that what is the on the this uh, solidification time depends on or how to calculate the solidification time the different other conditions here. So, now we look into the third conditions the solidification with the constant casting surface temperature. If the constant casting surface temperature how to handle the solidification time or how to estimate the solidification time we will try to look into this thing. We take the the similar kind of the reference here also. So, we see the this air mold then solidified metal and liquid molten metal there and there is interface between the solid and the mold surface also. So, all these 5 components creates the, the thermal resistance in, in actual casting process. Now, in this particular case solidification with constant surface temperature here usually large slab shape casting of the steel usually associated with this type of the heat transfer phenomena. Thin water cooled high conductive mold material uh, usually used. So, very thin water thin water cooled. So, that means very thin uh, mold surface as well as the water cooled that means the we can heat distribution rate we easily uh, increase using this through the mold surface and as well as the thermal conductivity is very high for this particular mold surface of this material. So, usually we use the the mold uh, metal as a in the uh, copper. So, in that case the thermal diffusivity is very high uh, for the copper. So, in this particular situation very large slab casting and use the very thin uh, copper mold uh, material and as well as the water cool in that case the thermal resistance is actually offered by the zone 4. So, zone 4 is the when the some solidified metal it the in the thin uh, metallic surface is created in contact with the mold surface whatever thermal resistance is uh, there that is because of the uh, this. Uh, the soli already solidified component in this particular casting process. So, in, in this case we can neglect the all other thermal resistance components. So, all other 4 thermal resistance components and based on that we can analyze the this the rate of the solidification or we I can say that what can be the solidification time in this particular situation. Now, suppose that at time t delta t is the depth of the solidification. So, we can assume that particular time t depth of the solidification is delta T. So, depth of the solidification uh, is the uh, delta T uh, at particular time T and this is the mold surface which is very thin as well as the water cooled. So, that so heat transfer rate is very high through the mold surface and then here liquid metal is there, but it is the solidified metal cast metal, but at a time T uh, delta T is formed delta t thickness of the depth of the solidification we can form. Of course, we consider one dimensional problem also in this case. Now, we can calculate the solidification time uh, delta equal to t equal to t s that means, what is the values of the this uh, delta t depth of the solidification at time t uh, that equal to h by 2 h by 2 in the sense that suppose uh, the uh, here large slab shape casting also suppose this is the slab shape casting. Uh, now, the similar kind of the uh, thing this is also uh, uh, here also it creates the uh, delta t and uh, maybe this is the mold. So, both side it will be there heat transfer occurs from both side. So, in that case the middle part if the thickness of the mold surface equal to this equal to actually h by 2 and this is also h by 2. So, exactly at the center point of the this slab shape having thickness h. So, then it reach to the from both side it actually should reach to the h by 2 distance. So, that is why I mentioned this particular case that one dimensional problem, but solidification will be counted del t equal to T s what is the values of the depth of the solidification that is the h by 2, because from the both side the heat transfer heat loss will occur and solidification front move from both side and they actually come to the at the middle point. So, if the thickness of the slab equal to h, so then it will be h by 2. So, h equal thickness of the slab that to be cast. So, in this situation how to analyze uh, this uh, other cases that means we can say that uh, heat transfer analysis we can do. So, the, this particular situation here you can see that uh, temperature profile is something uh, look like this. So, I mean to say that 
the this is the mold mold surface this is the mold and mold metal surface this is the cast volume right hand side the cast volume and this is the uh, mold uh, mold mold component now there is a depth of solidification at particular time equal to it's a uh, uh, suppose delta t delta in this case as a function of t delta t and at this point the temperature will be the theta f the freezing temperature here also we are neglecting the uh, the superheated temperature here also uh, the temperature but since thin wall copper mold is along with the water cool so there is there will not no variation of the temperature to along the thickness of the mold wall so that is why we because we have used the very high conductive material as well as the as the same time we are using the water cool so therefore no temperature difference along across the mold wall so we can say that so we make the straight line so here theta 0 equal to theta s so the surface temperature reaching at this point theta s exactly used to the outside temperature theta 0 so there is no temperature gradient along the uh, the mold surface uh, here we are assuming now in this situation the temperature profile uh, 0 to x and 0 to delta uh, between the 0 to delta t delta t i can say that i this is the delta t i can say like that at this distance now within that the variation temperature is theta minus theta s uh, divided by the theta infinity minus theta s error function x twice root of alpha s into uh, into uh, t so here uh, we can see the alpha is the thermal diffusivity of the solidified metal and all the alpha s and the theta s also temperature on the surface here you can see at this point the temperature equal to theta s and theta is the variable here but theta s and theta infinity uh, is the uh, this uh, theta infinity is a constant uh, the temperature and theta uh, uh, s in this particular case it is a constant so whatever variable is the theta and it depends on the so along the distance x and this kind of the error function I think you are familiar with this error function because in the very first time we uh, when you try to discuss the sand wall casting the heat transfer through the mold wall we have explained that we by utilizing the error function we can calculate the the rate of the heat conduction along the mold wall so similar kind of the uh, error function we are utilizing here also to understand the heat transfer phenomena associated in this particular case now here we see that theta infinity constant alpha is thermal deep solidified metal now if you see that at x equal to delta t when, when at x equal to this is the variable x so at a, x equal to delta t it is the temperature equal to theta f delta t theta equal to theta f if we put it then we are getting theta f minus theta s divided by theta infinity minus theta s error function x equal to delta t here and twice root of alpha s into t so this we can see uh, this we can see over the space we can see in terms of the this more or less constant terms are associated with that we can say this as a constant lambda we can consider this as a constant here then zeta we can define that this in this term is basically defined by zeta zeta equal to delta t by twice 2 root of alpha s into t so another constant we can a variable we can introduce here in, in terms of the zeta here now if this is the case uh, oh sorry before that we can say that also theta 0 equal to theta s the another boundary condition here theta 0 equal to theta s and theta 0 is the initial temperature of the mold and therefore no temperature gradient exists between the along the uh, mold uh, mold wall so zeta put it zeta equal to delta t by twice uh, 2 root alpha t s now we can do further this thing now we are getting that uh, from equation that uh, if it is the zeta so this is error function of zeta equal to lambda here also and theta minus theta thin infinity so therefore when error function is it equal to lambda because lambda is a constant here and i mean it means that delta t by twice root alpha s into t as a zeta so if we put it now from here we can del calculate the delta t twice zeta into alpha t s that we are getting from here also it means that delta t is proportional to the square root of the t uh, assuming the other terms are constant here so zeta and alpha is these are the uh, constant here in this case so it is a delta t the thickness uh, that means mold wall thickness uh, sorry solidified uh, front thickness it depends on the or solidification depth it actually proportional to the square root of the time t so that is very obvious here now point is that how to find out the values of the zeta so and that we will try to look into and then we will be able to get the the uh, rate of the heat transfer in this particular case now rate of the energy flow at the solid liquid interface that we can see that uh, that uh, k rate of the energy flow at the solid liquid interface in this case 
K del theta by temperature gradient we know the heat transfer Q equal to Fourier heat, uh, Fourier heat conduction law if we apply here also. So, heat flux equal to K into dt by dx. So, here K s into del theta by del x at x equal to delta. So, at x equal to delta means at this point, uh, at this point x equal to delta what is the values of the, the temperature gradient del theta by del x at x equal to delta. So, that will try to find out on this surface x equal to delta and that should be equal to the rho m into see the rho m the density of the uh, liquid metal and the latent heat and this is the d delta when how the delta values changes it is basically velocity. The velocity of the solidification or depth uh, the velocity of the solidification depth in this particular case the at what velocity it is moving the solidification form. So, rho m l d theta by dt. So, basically we are balancing the cross section area is the same in these two cases that we the uh, cancel each other from the both side the cross section area. So, rho m l d delta by del t equal to this one l is the latent heat of the fusion we can see. Now, uh, this is the energy flow at the solid liquid interface that should be balanced here uh, and because at this point the, the solidification from this, this front is moving continuously changing the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. So, that is why at this point what is the heat flux heat applied all these things that should be equal to what is the amount of the heat is re, uh, used to or it is released to change the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. So, that is why energy balance should maintain at the solid liquid interface rate of the energy flow said should be maintained at the solid liquid interface and from there we are getting this kind of the equation here. Now, we know the from our expression that uh, that temperature distribution that from there we can find out del theta by del x and temperature distribution expression the previous uh, we have seen that this is the temperature distribution. So, from here we need to calculate what is the value of del theta by del x. So, del theta by del x we calculate from this particular equation that infinity minus theta s d by dx of error function of x by twice root of square root of alpha s into t. So, here del theta by del x is this into on the d by dx error function we have already seen this is 1 by twice root of uh, alpha s into t into 2 by root pi e to the power minus z square here uh, or e to the power minus x square that means this square completely e to the power minus x square 4 alpha s into t. So, this thing we have already explained in the uh, in I, I think in the very first uh, the I think previous class there we have already explained that uh, how to uh, the de derivation of this error function that all information is there if you follow it you will be getting this is the expression for the derivation. Now, once you do that now we need to calculate del theta by del x in x at x equal to delta into k s we are getting k s equal to k s into del theta by del s we can further modify at x equal to delta then we are getting 1 by uh, 2 root uh, alpha s into t into 2 by root pi into e to the power minus del square by 4 alpha s into t. So, then 2 will be balancing and theta infinity minus theta s also we can calculate the error function uh, zeta in terms of that because theta s in the first equation if we, if we look into this that theta s theta f minus theta s theta infinity minus theta is equal to error function of this or that is the lambda constant. So, or this equal to actually zeta. So, here is basically equal to error function of uh, zeta. Now, you see that theta infinity minus theta is where calculate theta infinity minus theta is equal to in terms of the error function zeta and theta by theta s that we get in theta f minus theta s by the uh, error function zeta. Here you can calculate like that. Now, k s into theta uh, this one uh, we put this value theta infinity by theta s uh, here and then we get the theta minus theta s by error function zeta 1 by uh, root over alpha s into t 1 by root y into e to the power this is actually zeta. So, uh, zeta minus zeta square we can uh, this is actually zeta this symbol is the square and then that should be equal to this equal to equal to k s this equal to equal to that from the energy balance the heat flow rate rho m l into d delta by del t rho m l d delta by d t. So, d delta by d t also we, we can we have can calculate that d delta by d t here you can see that uh, uh, 
delta t we can calculate. So, here the from here we can find out d delta by d t from this expression. So, the d delta by d t we can calculate uh, so or in terms of the error function here also we can calculate the d delta by d t in terms of the error function and uh, we can see that um, I can think let, let take this as a reference. So, from here we can see d delta by d t. So, we can calculate d delta by d t and we are getting this uh, express in terms of the zeta term and then rho m l into this and making the further, further balance we, are, we will be able to get the theta by theta f minus theta s then k s here and uh, then we take rho m l other side rho m l put it and then root over pi alpha root over pi alpha s and uh, root over pi alpha s and there is the another alpha s root over alpha s and the other side the 2 2 balance zeta equal to error function of this error function this side the error function of zeta and then this e to the power minus this side e to the power minus e to the power zeta square. So, finally, we are getting that theta f minus theta s because we know that alpha s equal to we use this relation k s by rho m c s we put it then we will be able to get the c s by l equal to zeta this kind of equation we are getting. Now, here you can see it is a theta f minus theta s the in this case theta s might be unknown part, but theta f is the freezing temperature that is the is the well defined for a particular material c is the is, is the material properties in this case, but this is the we do not know this value. So, basically zeta is unknown here. Now, here zeta can be calculated from this equation and we can see we need to follow definitely the this relation of the equation is some like that we need to follow some kind of trial and error method to solve this particular equation. So, once you solve this particular equation using this value particular theta s theta f pi c s l all these things only zeta equal to unknown in this case and then we can calculate the zeta is solved. Uh, uh, and now it becomes known uh, these things. So, once zeta values can be calculated then we can see further also. Now, we have seen that uh, that uh, the solidification from MOF is basically h by 2 distance okay, at time T s okay, and then that is why we have written the solidification thickness delta at time T equal to T s should be equal to h by 2 that we can see here also we can use it and in this case of course, we assume the zeta equal to delta t minus twice root of alpha s into t that we can assume this this was the assumption that zeta equal to this value. Now, from here you can see that delta t s uh, say at time assume, but at time t equal to t s. So, that is why at delta t s equal to twice zeta into square root of alpha s into T s corresponds to that. Now, now delta T s equal to h by 2. So, we put delta T s equal to h by 2 twice zeta square root of alpha s and T s. Now, T s can be calculated in terms of other terms. So, h is the defined and zeta we have we need to calculate and alpha is the material property that we can we can easily calculate and zeta we need to calculate and then we can estimate what is the values of the the solidification time in this particular case. I mean to say that here we see that first step the solidification time we can calculate the first we this is the in any step we need to calculate what is the values of the zeta first in this expression. Uh, then once we put use this expression delta t by twice uh, here. So, it is corresponding to T s and of course, delta t delta t but at delta t at t equal to t s equal to h by 2 then is half of this thickness it will reach. So, when we make this equal and then from there we find out t s is the the solidification depends on the h s square 60 zeta square into alpha s. So, more or less it depends on the this zeta value might not be much variation with the uh, this thing other uh, changing other dimensional, but in that case it is more strongly depends on the the thickness of the particular slab which you are supposed to do the casting in uh, uh, in this process. So, this is the way to calculate that uh, how to estimate the solidification time uh, for this particular uh, casting process. Now, we can look into the uh, 
uh, other case also that is more uh, realistic problem as compared to the previous one because previous one we, uh, we assume that there is no temperature gradient at the, the mole metal uh, thickness direction. But in this case we can assume there is a some, some kind of the uh, this thing the might be having some sort of the uh, temperature resistance uh, uh, thermal resistance at the along the mold wall also. But this particular situation will arise when the mold wall is very thick copper mold of course copper is having uh, very thick uh, but at the same time it is there is no need of using any kind of the water cooling system. It means that the dissipation heat dissipation through the copper mold is not uh, that not infinity or it is uh, not very high rather having some finite values of the heat dissipation based on that there must be some kind of the temperature gradient exist along the, the mold interface. So, therefore, might be uh, must be having some kind of the temperature differences. So, earlier we started with this thing at the at the mold metal interface that temperature was theta s and some temperature gradient also in this the reaching the theta f uh, over the solidified metal, but it was initially to assume that theta s equal to theta 0 uh, that means there is no temperature gradient, but here we can assume that theta 0 is different from the theta s I mean theta s 0 is lower than that of the theta s. So, it means that over this mold wall, so some temperature gradient also exists. Now, how to incorporate this temperature gradient these two, comp two, two resistance one is this part another is this part. So, these two thermal resistance has to be incorporated in this particular equations and here you see what we can incorporate uh, this uh, particular uh, this uh, heat con contact resistance at the two different um, uh, interfaces. Now, mold copper is quite mold is semi infinite assuming the mold wall is semi infinite along the x direction. So, we are assuming the semi infinite length along the finite uh, infinite length along the x direction. These two cases we can represent the temperature distribution to different way in terms of the error function is like that. So, x equal to uh, this is the positive side of uh, x direction and other is the negative x. So, this is as a uh, reference point we can see that theta minus theta s by theta 0 minus theta s equal to error function x minus of x by twice root of alpha s into, into for x less than 0 and other cases it is the x greater than 0. Here you can see this is theta 0 and this is the theta infinitive also. Uh, these two cases the temperature distribution we can uh, we can uh, find out. So, when you start the uh, solidification with predominant resistance in the mold and solidified wall that means contact resistance from the both mold wall as well as the uh, solidified metal. So, we can consider the both the component resistance and we take this as a reference line reference point positive x and uh, negative x in these two cases the temperature distribution is like that theta minus theta s by theta 0 minus theta s equal to error function of minus x by twice root of alpha s into t that is true for the x less than 0. So, this is the one case and other case theta minus theta s by theta infinity minus theta s error function minus x by 2 root 2 square root of alpha s into t. So, here this is valid for x greater than 0. So, these two cases we can see this is the temperature distribution and we see it is a, as a function of the uh, it is basically representing in the form of a error function also uh, and we will we will try to discuss this uh, these two uh, equations of temperature distribution uh, in these cases. Now, here along with the defining the, the temperature distribution we need to define some kind of the boundary conditions because using this boundary condition we can uh, we can finally get the complete solution of these two equations is like that. The first boundary conditions prevails here the heat flux balance at the mold metal interface. So, at the mold metal interface heat flux, so this is the mold metal interface, so heat flux should be balanced. So, definitely what is the heat is flowing that should be balanced. So, here we can put the boundary condition is like that k s del theta by del x at x equal to 0 plus it should be equal to k into del theta by del x at x equal to 0 minus. So, at this point 0 minus means it is a this side material is this side other cases material is the other side, but at the interface the flow we can calculate this cases 0 minus is this side uh, that means we are taking k, k means the properties for the mole metal and other side 0 plus means here the we are considering the properties of the 
K is the solidified metal and of course, we see two different equations we have considered x less than 0 and x greater than 0. So, as per the boundary condition we can calculate del theta by del x depending upon the, the condition the expression which case x greater than 0 and one case is x less than 0. So, that means for x uh, this is the for x less than 0 x minus and x greater than 0 in this cases and both the cases we can calculate the del theta by del x putting the appropriate the we can clearly distinguish the which zone represent the mo, uh, mold material and which for the cast material. Based on that we select the properties and we can find out uh, we can put these boundary conditions and from there we can get some reach some kind of the relation. So, this is one heat, heat balance at the mold metal interface definitely should maintain. Other is the rate of the energy balance at the solid liquid interface also there. So, we see the solid liquid interface means at the at the solid liquid this is the liquid metal and this is the solidified metal. So, at the interface also we can see the energy balance should also be maintained. So, that we have we can see that what is the K s heat is conducted at x equal to x equal to delta the heat flux basically K s delta t is basically heat flux uh, uh, at x equal to uh, delta. So, that should be equal to what is the uh, the heat is absorbed by or heat released for the changing of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase and based on that when continuously changing the liquid phase the solid phase and the solidification from move along x direction. So, at particular time, so suppose the solidification, uh, th solidification depth equal to delta t. So, then uh, at this point x equal to delta t the heat flux this actually indicates the q delta t that should be equal to what is the heat release to solidify from changing just to changing the liquid phase to solid phase. So, therefore, rho m into L latent heat into change of the d delta by d t. So, it is a velocity of the solidification for moving along the x direction. So, this is the another boundary condition if we put it and third boundary condition is see that theta uh, that means temperature at delta at this point what is the at this at this surface what is the temperature delta t that should be equal to theta f definitely at this point at any point this surface that temperature here theta uh, this at a distance delta t and a particular time t must be theta f that means freezing temperature of course, in this cases also we are only considering the freezing temperature. So, we are neglecting the superheated temperature of the liquid metal and we are dealing with in this case at this point there is a change of the phase continuously change of the phase the from liquid phase to solid phase having the same material the cast material. But in this case so uh, one side is the mold material another is the uh, cast material cast solidified metal. So, definitely here we can see that two boundary currents is such that we are basically maintaining the flux in, in the uh, the heat flux balance at the interface and same thing also we can we can we can dealing at the at the solid liquid interface here also we are maintaining the energy balance of the both side so uh, with this boundary conditions if we solve these two uh, temperature equations we will be getting uh, these equations can be re represented in this form along with the bound uh, but look these are the two equations at the for the mold metal another is the solidified metal so, in this two equation and along with these three boundary conditions we can reach the three uh, the different equations is like that. So, if we further uh, rearrange along with the boundary conditions we can we can reach this particular so I am not going into details in the how we are reaching this thing, but we can reach this equation along the boundary condition is that theta minus theta s c s L root pi latent heat equal to same the error function zeta and we have already discussed that uh, what is the definition of the zeta this case is. So, I am not repeating here not again. So, this is one equation you can reach then second equation we can reach the theta infinity minus theta s by L root pi C s into zeta e to the power zeta square this is also second equation we are reaching and third equation will reaching that theta s minus theta 0 divided by theta infinity minus theta is equal to k s rho m c s by k rho c. So, actually k rho and c these are the properties of the mole material and k s rho m c s these are the properties of the cast material. So, uh, square root of that and that equal to phi we can see this as a constant and uh, uh, in this case have to be careful that this is the which property both the properties we are utilizing here mole material properties as well as the cast material properties. 
and this is the constant term we can assume this are because all are material properties are the two different. So, for this particular combination of the material cast and uh, uh, mole material this becomes the constant term. So, once we reach these three equations which is further explored these three equation utilizing this thing we can estimate the solidification time. So, from equation 2 and 3 uh, we can get that uh, this equal this expression that theta s minus theta 0 into C s by L root pi equal to zeta into e to the power zeta square into phi this equation. This is equation 4 we can define this as equation 4 and from 4 and 1. So, from 1 and 4 we can reach we can try to remove because 1 also theta s is there and uh, 4 also theta s is there. So, from these two equations if we try to remove the theta s then we can reach this expression is like that theta a minus theta 0 by L root pi C s equal to zeta e to the power minus zeta square error function zeta plus phi because theta f and theta 0 is actually well defined and theta is some intermediate temperature. So, most of the cases theta s is the unknown. So, that is why we try to eliminate the theta s from these two expression and then we reach the in terms of the other temperature because other temperature is very uh, clearly defined in this particular process problem. So, theta f theta 0 is defined properties material properties material properties and zeta is the unknown here and phi also unknown here. So, but phi can be uh, phi can be calculated because phi exactly not unknown here because phi can be calculated from here. If you see phi equal to square root of this one this expression k s rho m c s divided by the k into rho into c. So, from here you can easily find out the phi value because all are the material properties. So, we can so then we can say this is the known quantity, but phi is the one quantity and left hand side also known quantity because this theta f freezing temperature and initial temperature is the known quantity the other are the material properties. So, only unknown is the zeta. So, now again if we calculate this thing, so you can solve for zeta by trial and error method. So, if you observe this uh, calculation is almost similar to what we did in the last just previous one previous calculation that, that to how to calculate the zeta, but here right hand side the one extra term is added that is the phi and that is also constant. So, if we follow some trial and error method and we can estimate the xi the similar approach then if we estimate the xi and from xi we can estimate the solidification time because we know that solidification time is T s equal to h square by 16 zeta square into alpha s. So, similar kind of the expression because that that we already explained the how we are reaching this expression. Now, here the in these two cases the uh, previous one the only there is might be difference values of the xi might be there and from there the solidification time will be different. So, with the simple modification of this thing actual cases we can further more realistic problem we can we can consider because in this case we are assuming or assuming the finite uh, the uh, thickness thick uh, the mold metal is having significant thickness and uh, there if there is no use of the water cool uh, uh, over the surface of the mold material copper mold material then in that case we need to consider the contact resistance from the both is the mold wall as well as the the solidified metal component both the cases will be considered the contact resistance and based on that we can estimate the solidification time and the expression for the solidification time it is a similar approach what we did in the uh, previous expression. So, zeta can be calculated. Now, we can take an example also uh, this is not exactly example we can say the how to approach to solve this particular problem. So, here we consider the one example determine the solidification time for the slab shape casting process when casting is done in the water cooled copper mold. This is the what we discuss in the first approach the casting is made in a very thick copper mold these are the two differences. So, in these two cases in the two different cases we need to uh, one second cases we need to consider the values of the phi and both the cases approach will be the same, but the first cases uh, we consider these are the uh, solution A that with the error function uh, zeta zeta e to the power zeta square theta minus theta 0 uh, by uh, by C s by L. So, if we solve it from there we can trial and error method we can find out the zeta and uh, if solidification time is the same h s square by the 16 zeta square into alpha s and alpha is equal to k by rho into C s that k by rho C p for particular is the cast material 
and from here we can easily calculate the values of the solidification type. But from here this equation we need to find out what is the value of the zeta in this case. This is the first case when you are considering the casting is done in the water cool copper mold. But second one we do not use the very thick uh, copper mold, but we are not using any kind of the water cool. So, in this case the both the contact resist both the resistance components has to be considered in the second case as compared to the first case because first case is only the resistance because of the solidified uh, the some solidified uh, depth of the solidification what is the contact resistance offered by this thing we need to consider that only but second case both the the uh, resistance through the uh, heat uh, uh, resistance through the uh, with respect to the the mold metal uh, surface uh, sorry mold thickness as well as the the solidification depth both the component we need to consider in the second case. Now, if we consider the second case here we can see first we need to find out the estimation of the five in the in terms of the material properties I think square root of both and then from there we can find out the this expression that we just we explain this expression and from there we can see all are the known quantity only only uh, this uh, zeta are different in this case and uh, here you can see zeta by trial and error method you can find out the zeta and the solidification type expression will be the same t is equal to h square but only this case is the second case the this zeta value will be different so that's why the solidification time will be different in case of the in, in the second case now these are the two cases we can find out now we can see the now in we already all this expression we just excluded the theta s the surface temperature theta s because we just eliminate the theta s and uh, and try to find out other in we try to find out the relation in the known quantities but theta s can be calculated in this particular case but theta s can be calculated like that if we, ex, we pick up any expression associated with theta s and from there we can one we find the theta f minus theta s by l root pi c s that we expression we have already given there and the in terms of the error function zeta so from here we can find out the values of the theta s but uh, when we calculate the values of the theta s then we can check it whether the temperature of the theta s whether it exceeds the mole metal temperature or not then uh, maybe design of the casting process may, might not be appropriate if it cross the melting point of the mole material. So, it is just a check to calculate the theta s what is the values of the theta s and this from there we can check whether status of the uh, mole surface or mole metal uh, surface. So, this all about uh, this uh, uh, this uh, different casting processes and that uh, may be two basically we have discussed the two different types of one is the sand mold casting where the temperature calculation is completely different other case is the mostly uh, this uh, die casting permanent mold casting other uh, cases and third and fourth cases we discuss that the that if is the copper mold is utilized and then in that cases and whether it is water cool or not based on that we can uh, consider the amount of the contact resistance uh, thermal resistance offered by during the casting process and in these two cases the solidification time be calculated in the different way. So, uh, uh, from there we can dist easily distinguish the how the solidification time are different for the different cases and all these cases we need to be very careful what kind of the contact resistance is basically useful for a particular casting process. Once we know that this is we, we should consider this particular thermal resistance and based on that we can calculate the, the heat transfer or rate of the heat transfer and finally the solidification type associated with the different casting processes. Now apart from this thing there is a continuous casting process of course continuous casting process to some extent also similar to having the copper high copper mold we can utilize and when water cooled copper mold usually utilize. Uh, in case of the continuous casting process, but sometimes it is a directly correlating this thing continuous casting process the solidification time is difficult depending upon the this problem is uh, somehow different in, in this case. So, here what uh, we can we can see that uh, in, in case of the continuous casting process uh, how it works we can we see um, this is the molten metal is poor from the top surface and then it is a uh, it is a uh, gradually the uh, try to solidify this is the liquid metal and this is solidify and with certain velocity it is become it is basically uh, come out with the velocity the strip is come out solidified strip is come out. Now it depends on the this is the at a distance y uh, uh, this is the uh, so this distance y so at this distance y this actually indicates the 
uh, skin depth delta here we can see that the skin depth delta at a particular distance y uh, the skin depth. So, with the solidification skin depth is equal to y, but this is in the liquid phase and gradually it is moving. So, here in the continuous casting process there are continuously pouring of the liquid metal from the top and uh, in this case we can utilize this uh, copper mold also uh, in this case in contact water to copper mold and finally, we can we can we can basically move this strip using some roller system also uh, such that roller system and, and in between you can put the water spray also. So, that just to cool down the water spray, but whatever solidification occurs at this particular zone. So, here the liquid metal is transferred to the solidified metal. So, uh, in this case and uh, uh, we can see easily there is no riser is used and there is continuously solidified metal is withdrawn in the continuous casting process. And we see the at a distance y the delta is the uh, solidification skin thickness and we see we usually analyze this thing the to understand the different parameters using the different non dimensional group i am not discussing in the how this non dimensional group is forming but to just to know that that there is a there are several non dimensional group in the different parameters also here we can see the hf sky the film heat transfer coefficient into y y is variable at a distance so at a distance y we define the skin depth solid skin uh, thickness delta so, here u is the velocity, here I can see the u is the velocity, the velocity of the casting, k s is the uh, I think casting uh, thermal conductivity of the cast material, c m specific heat density of the cast material and y is a variable distance here h f. Similarly, other non dimensional parameter l dot latent heat, the effective heat. So, l latent heat plus specific heat into theta p minus theta f, theta p is the peak temperature and theta f is the freezing temperature. So, here you can find out the L dot and the C s is the specific heat and then theta f minus theta 0. So, theta f minus theta 0 and this is another one non dimensional parameter and we can uh, use this non dimensional parameter to calculate the other parameters and other is the in terms of the this h f film in terms of coefficient delta at a distance y delta and k s, k s is the thermal conductivity of uh, this thing uh, of the liquid metal. So, we can estimate what is the extent of the y can be go uh, that thing to make it the complete solidification in a uh, continuous casting process because y is variable in the sense that depending upon the process parameter this can be extend this value can be uh, extend at the different up to certain extent. So, that is why we do the non dimensional parameter and based on that we need we can calculate the uh, other parameters also using the non dimensional this is the usual uh, procedure practice to analyze the continuous casting uh, casting process. And there is not much needed the solidification time and all these things because we have already calculated the solidification time uh, this thing uh, uh, we, we in case of the copper mold and uh, whether it is water cooled or not based on that we can calculate the solidification time also, but continuous casting process other way it is different in the sense that uh, gravitational force also acting here and this uh, of course, if it is in the horizontal plane if we put it then gravitational force, uh, but usually uh, there might not be there, but in the usually in this case the continuous casting process. So, we put in the, uh, the uh, top with the uh, due to the gravitational force from the top we put the liquid metal and is gradually solidify and come out from the other side of the uh, of the uh, complete system. So, this is the usual practice for the continuous casting process, but I am not showing into much details about the this uh, how to non dynamic parameter comes and what exactly the calculate the this uh, solidification time in this particular case. I think that is all uh, uh, for these things we have discussed the casting the solidification time of the different cases of the casting process uh, and uh, uh, next class we will try to look into the different uh, other aspect of the casting process or specifically uh, we will try to look into the what way the, the solidification uh, can be uh, rate of the solidification can be modified in case of the casting process. Oh, I think that is all for today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.